Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Tracy, and welcome to Let's Talk About It with Tracy, right here at the Heritage Studios in London. Yes, and tonight we have a very special guest in the house, sitting in the hot seat with us. We have the legendary Sir Lloyd. And that's right, he's here tonight, and we'll be having conversations with him about his musical journey and everything he's done throughout the music and entertainment industry. Alongside me tonight, not forgetting my co host, Marcia. Hi, guys. And as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special co host in tonight, my guest, Sandiva. Hello, everyone. And we'll hear a bit more about Sandiva a little bit later on. She'll tell us a little bit about who she is and so forth. But we have to say, our little Tanya, our lovely sweetheart Tanya, we're missing you, darling. She's out doing mummy duties. You know what mummy duties are about, don't you? So we'll see San, um, Tanya uh, next week here at the studios. So um, anyway, we're going to um, just have a conversation now. We're going to get on with the show. And over to you, Marcia. On tonight's show, we'll be speaking the legendary, award-winning Lloyd Robert, a.k.a. Sir Lloyd. We will be listening to some of his music, and you, the audience, will have the opportunity to phone in and ask him some questions, as many questions as you can. So you can call us on this number, 20 800 46 100. Again, I repeat, 020-800-46-100. Did you get that, ladies and gentlemen? Because we have the great Sir Lloyd here today. You will not believe some of the artists that he's produced. We are talking about people like Peter Huntingale, Garnet Cross, Sandra Cross, Paulette Dartaja, I Couldn't Go On, Maxi Priest. If you want to ask him some questions, don't forget to phone in, and we'll see you after the break. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to have a quick, quick break, and um, we're going to come back and go straight into the show and speak to you. Um, you can guys can actually speak with Sir Lloyd. All right. See you in a sec. <laughs> Sandiva. So Sandiva, I'm going to introduce you. <coughs> I didn't expect that so quickly. <laughs> we were just having a little wrap here. Okay. All right. So that was a really funny quick break. But anyway, we're back. Right. As I said, we've got a special guest host here tonight and I want to have a quick chat with her. And I'm sure you guys want to know a little bit more about this gorgeous lady here that we have. And um, she'll tell you a little bit about herself. Um, her name is Sandiva. Okay, my name is Sandiva, aka Sandra. Um, I got into music through playing the piano when I was quite young, and I really enjoyed it. Got into all the musicals at school, ended up in the musicals in the West End, and now I'm just about to release my new song, which we'll hear more about at another show, because tonight we are really lucky to have our special guest today, Sir Lloyd. So I think um, less about me today and more about Sir Lloyd. We really are interested in some of the people that you produced. You want to hear about Dick Shepherd and what you're doing now. So over to you, Sir Lloyd. And we just want to ask you, first of all, about your launch in the UK. Well, um, how Sir Lloyd started was... Um, Previously, before, before Sir Lloyd started in 79, 
Um, I was in a sound system called Trinity Rockers. Uh, me and my classmates, um, Paul, Paul Hall, Floyd Griffiths, and Robert Taylor, four of us started up a sound called um, Trinity Rockers in 76. You know, I was only 14 then. And that, that ran for two years to 78. And then we all went our separate ways. And then I, because I love the music, I said, I'm gonna start it on my own, you know? And um, so I just started solo in 79. And as they say, the rest is history. Well, you're not gonna believe some of the people that we're talking about. We'd love to hear about your experiences with um, Maxi Priest. Well, how Maxi Priest came about was um, back in 1982, um, a producer from a sound system, well, he was a sound man as well. You'll find out a lot of sound men in, 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 the, reggae, in the reggae world, they start off a sound man and then they go on to being producers like Cox and uh, um, Studio One Cox and, Cox and Dodd. He was a sound man. He was Duke Breed. You know, and then Lloydie Coxon, he was a sound man, and he went on to produce artists like um, Louisa Mark. How Maxi Priest came about is when, in 1982, was in, when we, John Jalors, a volcano from Volcano Sound System, he, um, he came up with an album which was released on Green City called um, Live at Aces International. And uh, it had all the DJs of that time, Little John, uh, Welton Irie, Toyin, Ye uh, Yellow Man, all those artists that was at, at, that, at that session, live. So I just said, well, we, let's do one for the UK. And um, so I called up all, all the big sounds of that time, which was Coxon, Frontline, Saxon, IHS, Jam Down Rockers, predominantly South London. I mean, most of the big sounds come from South London. <laughs> most of them, yeah. But, um, but then, you know, Sax, Sax, how Maxi Priest came in, because he, he represented... Um, Saxon. Mm. So did Philip Levy and Peter King, and we recorded the session live. You know, and out of that album, you know, you, we had so much talent came out of that. Although Maxi Priest wasn't on the album, but I still got the studio, um, the studio tape of it. You know, and um, from that, you had came out of that Sister Candy, Philip Levy, Ricky Rankin, which is Ricardo McKenzie. So much talent came out of that. Tipper <coughs> Irie. Came, so much talent came out of that um, from that album. That album was so big that the only thing that could stop it from going to number one <laughs> was in May '83. Was mm -hmm. Bob Island Records decided to release Bob Marley's first album since he died two years previously in May '81, and Buffalo Soldier was that album. Yes. and you couldn't get anything bigger than yeah, Buffalo bigger Soldier. than that. that was, you know, yeah. and, and I felt I felt kind of honoured to say, well. At least Bob owed me off yes. with that because that album was the album at the time, mm -hmm. you know. And as like I said, so much talent came out of that because even for today, um, the fast talk Peter King from Saxon, he he there's a clip on there that he done. He was the first one to start the, the fast talk, and from there you got all all so many American acts like Twister and Buster Rhyme. Mm -hmm. They're all talking fast lyrics and that's all coming from UK right here with Peter wow. King. That's right. A lot of the UK a lot of the um producers as well have come from sound system as, as well as some of the some of the artists all have been developed or grown from sound system. Was that the trend at that time? Yeah we you had parallel you had sound system and like uh, Neville King, mm -hmm. he, he was another good producer uh, and a sound man as well. That Lord Coos, Anthony Brightly for so Do you know what I mean? Uh, he he came out. The, both both sound men came out with good talents. You know, sound men always seem to find the talent. But you had you had your local man. Not he was not a, a sound man. They produce music anyway. You, you, you get me? You, know, you don't have to be a sound man to, to produce But music. it seemed like at that time, like the, a lot of the good artists that were born through <clears> sound <throat> systems, you know. So for the audience, can we elaborate a little bit and explain a little bit about what 
sound system represents or stands for because in this day and age it's kind of like dying out slowly well no I, I, I tend to differ you see well sound system was the main front runner in, in the 60s it is, um, because they weren't playing normal radio sessions wasn't playing our music do you understand playing reggae music and even soul, certain soul music at, at, at that point, mm-hmm. you know Unless you, unless you're, you're, you're from like Philadelphia, Motown. People. Yeah. 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 Everything going. Yeah, yeah. 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 The, the, um, the sound, the sound man. From there, when the sound, they play, they play tunes, whether it's a 45 or a dub play, you know, it was just a message sending out to all the people out there to let them know, say, what's, what's happening, you know. <laughs> yeah, each week, they will go to a record shop, and, you know, you go to shops like, say, in my time, it was like, Reds Records and in South London and Dublin, that <laughs> was, 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 was all Kai and, and Body Music, and, you know, all, you, you would know, say like in Dublin and uh, they will put all the priests that come from Jamaica, they will put it in a bag. So when I go there, I know what's coming out that week, what's out that week. You understand? That's the difference between now, because now you kind of lose touch with what's going on. Because if you want to know what's happening, you have, you have to go online. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless you know certain, certain man already who can feed you from the studio with certain music. You know, so we, we kind of lost that touch, but I don't think sound system is dying out because, um, it, if anything, it's, it, it, it's, it's become more nostalgia now in, in a sense where you've got sounds like Saxon that are still front running, uh, Fat Man and, and um, Jimmy Magic. Mm. You know, they're predominantly more or less playing out every week. But you guys, which you've named the, the, the names, you alongside Saxon and so forth are the pioneers and realistically it's why I say it's kind of dying out because the younger generation haven't really oh, picked sense. up from mm-hmm. it so that you know to take the baton and run with it so basically you know when you go sort of seat back and let them take the wheel what's going to happen they, they're just lazy <laughs> but all, have you got the old bucks? Yeah, they just that, that reminds me. I thought to myself, do they still carry those yeah, big, huge box. boxes? Was it now like a, a little tiny box that gives out the same sound? Yeah. I mean, you, you get some youngsters being like you, but on the whole, they they're not like from our, they're not the same yeah. as our generation. Right. You know, you have soul man, and then you have you have box boy who you lift up the boxes, and then you have a selector, and you have a mic man. Um, this generation is different. It's all computerized now. Where mm. they just walk with a laptop. Somebody marvel with a phone. Yeah. You get to a party. They, they're playing. They've got this iPhone, mm. and they play the music from the iPhone. Yeah. So, but what's great though, Sir Lloyd, is that we still at least have you your greatest hits on a CD, mm, which yes. you can actually buy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, you know, I'm sure you can download it. Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's just the nice to see that you've actually got the hard copy, yeah. a hard copy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there is people still prefer that that personal touch. Yes, the hard copies. Mm, even the vinyl as well. I didn't print any of the vinyl, but you find that most of like the 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 dub who's into dub and roots music, they press a lot of vinyl. Vinyls, yeah. You know. Vinyl clashes. But um, mm. it's all about streaming online now, and mm. technology is like this is where. <laughs> Where people are just copying people's tunes now, you know. Mm. So if you have a copy, choose the other say, Give me a rub now. <laughs> 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 and, and it's like that, you know. Because I, I, I used to literally buy records every week, and record companies used to love me in in the in the 80s, um, record and 70s. Record uh, record companies used to love me because I would buy like say Michael Jackson's album Thriller, and then. I will buy the the twelve inch for each one, and the reason being why I do that is because the twelve inch is a is a more uh, better quality mm. than the album. Oh, yeah, because the album you find that what when it's when it's stretched out too much, you get too much um, uh, feedback, you know, humming mm. on the album. 
And it was, did you find that out more when you were actually playing out? Was you, that, you, is you, that a preference as a DJ? It's a preference as a DJ because because right. I would find that if I'm if I bought the album at home, I wouldn't have noticed what you're talking yeah, about. I mean, there and this well, put this way: if you got say like Michael Jackson's album, you get like four or five on each side. It's not too bad. We get some albums where there's like ten tracks on one side. The more tracks you have, the the, 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 the worse the quality is. Mm-hmm. So it's best to get it on twelve inch or seven inch. Everything started from seven inch, you know, from mm-hmm. the sixties. You understand? And it's come, it came full round again in the, in, the, in the late nineties, um, the seven inch now. But it's kind of all, it's kind of all dying out. But it's not gone completely. No. Because you have like specialist shops like um, um, Superton of Brixton. He he still he still supplies wine. Yeah, he does. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and then and you've got like dub vendors. They still they do. They although the shops closed down, but they're still online. They will mm. supply the vinyls through online. Mm. Anything else, Andy? Well, I really would like to talk about your um, first ever live recording at Dick Shepherd's we've heard about. Yeah. Um, one of the um, organisations that used to work with the youth, which unfortunately all these sort mm. of youth clubs now have died down, but this sounded like something fantastic. An all day up? Yeah, well, the, all, the solo all day of the century came about um, in. 1985. The first one was um, a live session at Norwood, Norwood Suite, um, where we we had soul sounds and reggae sounds, DJs come together, and it was just like it, it was awesome. That ran for ten years. That song was there, the century, yeah, wow. um, yeah. It it, it 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 really peaked about um, 89. It really peaked, and by 87, what I did, I recorded I recorded the session. We were three, three top soul DJs at the time, which was Beat Freak, Main, main Attraction, and um, I can't remember the other one now. Beat Freak, Main Attraction, I can't remember the other, the other third time. It was three, three top, TNT, that's it, TNT. And, and TNT DJ Ron, he went on to be a, 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 a real good um, drum and bass DJ. Mm-hmm. You know, talent that just came out from that album there. You understand? And then after that, we did part two, with um, with with, with Asher World and uh, uh, Brookston Fridge, you know, and Asher World just came on the scene in '88. They, they were doing things in '91. Sorry, at '91 they they did the album. They did unleash the album with that one. So, so, so stick a thing just for a sec. Um, Asher World, you just mentioned. Can you say for our, all, our viewers, in order to who exactly was Asher World? Was, was they? Well, the main front runner was um. Uh, was Chris Goldfinger mm-hmm. from BBC Radio One, and um, and his brother Errol Silver. Yeah, they they were they were very good entertainers, you know. And um, when we released that album, on that album we had Sweetie Ivy on there, Crucial Robbie, alongside Daddy Ernie, Commander B, and General Levy, you know. So yeah, we uh, you know we moved around, I moved around with a lot a lot of uh, talent. <coughs> Big names. Yeah, in the, in, the eight, in the 80s, because then General Levy went on to do one of the biggest jungle track, which is incredible. Yes. You know, that was 95. I used to write that song. Yeah. Okay, Marcy, you have anything? Well, first of all, let me ask you, where in Jamaica are your parents from? Uh, Clarendon. Oh, Clarendon, yes. Yeah, Clarendon, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Clarendon. Well, well, are they still alive? Yeah, they're still here. They're in the UK. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're from a, uh, a place called Leicesterfield and Copperfield. Okay. It's, it's more like their main town at the time was like a place called Frankfield. Oh, Frankfield, yes. Yeah, 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 my, Frankfield. Yes, my, yeah. Um, my grandfather then. From the Leicester. Leicester was a Baptist. Three yeah. from Frankie. Their family's from Saint Elizabeth, but you know they migrate into different countries to the churches. Mm. So he was in Frankie at the time. So he's a Baptist. Yeah, that's where my parents are from. Yeah, they came here oh. in the sixties. Mm. Yeah. So now, tell me, there's something I want to ask you about. Yeah. Okay, different from what you was telling me about so all these things that you do just lead you up to the. To doing the, the events management planning and all of yeah, those well, things. Just... Well, the, the events, how that came about was that um, it's in '79. You know, you find that you're trying to get a play, and you, you don't get no play from no one. 
So I form, I form my own promotion company, LGR Promotion. Oh, okay, so you formed that yourself? Well, yeah, so you know, oh. you know, with the backing of like my sisters and the family, oh, okay. you know, the distant family, uh, the extended family, and, and you know, their support was very good. Oh, okay. So, you know, what, by the time 1980 came, I started to create my own fan base. Mm. You know, things like mailing lists, the sound oh, systems yeah. weren't doing them time. I, was, I, I started a lot of things, you know. Yeah, the sound system were doing things like mailing lists them time there. You understand? So how did you compile your mailing list at that time? It was just, because it wasn't um, obviously constant. So what you do, you, you just take people, uh, you take their name and addresses and you just put it, and you write it down. And, then, and people were willing to give you addresses, just like that? Yeah, yeah it's people, it's, these were people that you knew. These are people that I okay. knew that were in college with, people who know personally. And you, you know, I started off with 36 names and then it grew to about, it peaked to about, to about 1,300. You know, so what would you do? Would you like send out yeah. leaflets mm -hmm. and tickets and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. That went right throughout the eighties. That went, wow. and then the nineties things started to change because the email started to come in, and it started it started to be expensive. Obvious. Yeah, because stamp. When you look, when you think about it, the, the stamps, the envelopes. Hmm. You understand? And then the manpower. I used to have my little sisters and me. I was still get it. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were six years old. They were they blessed them. Not working for nothing. No, you see, yeah, you have to pay them, you know. And then and then you've got to stick the stickers and you've got to put stickers on the back because to re if uh, if it doesn't reach them to return. So it was. A I had a conveyor belt like like this, you know. Them oh, yeah. sticking them on. It went that went on until about the last one I sent out was two thousand and nine. But there was a big gap still because that I, I wasn't using it really. 2009 was the last time I used it for Brickstocks in Fort Eve, and then that's it. I didn't use it anymore because it was it, was, it, it, it cost it, it actually cost something like 300 pounds mm. to, to send out, mm. three four hundred pounds to send out. Where now you just send a text, you just send a text, and just and it doesn't you don't have to have an operation of people to to send out the mailers, you know? Yeah. So the technology. So the technology is, in the one hand, is have some good and have some bad. Right. So it's about this um, rock with the baby. That's my favorite. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that was. I love that one. Yeah, Neville Morrison. That was recorded in 1997, 96, around that time. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't love this. I didn't love this song for a long time ago. Um, as a as a as a youth, you know, when Delano Stewart recorded it in the late sixties, and then. The one that really captured me was um, was Johnny Clark's version um, in '75 for Trojan League Attack, and that one, I love, I love that one. Yeah, because I love that kind of beat, mm, and yeah. you know you can yeah. rub off the paper wall. <laughs> Wait, you, you know that beat. That's Tracy. That's yeah. Tracy. Yeah. You know. See what no, you that's what I say. <laughs> but I never experienced it <laughs> <See what you're laughs> because I know I never you know, experienced. Then, when we used to hear that song, mm. and you know, like when they, they had a little party, and the man and the woman, them dancing, and you see them moving to the beat and mm. the music in a way, you know, swaying, you know, and the music was so nice because I always love that music. And I never hear that song for a long mm. time mm. until tonight, now when, you know, you play that, yeah. it, and I said, I know that song because <laughs> that was one of the favorites from back home. Mm. You know? Well, we would be listening to some of Sir Lloyd's songs after the break when we have one and um, one of them, that particular song, mm -hmm. I believe it's on the list, we can, you know, I suppose throw that in. If it's there, it's on the list, it should be on the list. No, it's not on the list, but you can... We can throw it in. Like I just mentioned it, we can yes. work out. Yes. We'll work out, see if we can find that song. And I want that song. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was recorded with um, a, a band called uh, Mafia and Fluxy. Mm -hmm. they, they did the backing for it. Okay. You know, and um and Neville Morrison did the vocal to mm -hmm. it, you know. So uh, yeah, yeah, it was a good song. Mm -hmm. Because Neville Morrison is an artist from this country. That's right. Yeah, okay. But most all of most of artists the, some of it. So but yeah. most of the singers them name that you mentioned, mm -hmm. they even sound like most of well I, I, away from Yellowman and do what the rest that I heard they talk about. Mm -hmm. Most of them is that have the same name from our singers back in the day. Yeah. So I want to I wonder if they take the name, you know, because that person and that they maybe they use that name as well. Some of them, some and, of them. But you we, know, I mean, a lot of them will be created their own names still. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of them create their own names, yeah. But you, you may find the old one or two, you know, it's like when my sister came out, um 
we when she first passed, we, we called I, I called her. We said we called her Sister Nancy. Yeah, because yeah. And we said Sister like Nancy. what you just said there. Yeah. Yes. So we said, nah, I don't want that man. Cause like try and be original, you know. Yeah. So by the time we came around to doing the Dick Shepherd School mm -hmm. album, and she represented Saloya, we changed it from to that to Candy. Okay. Sister Candy. Okay, because yeah, yeah Sister Nancy. That's what was his name, Sister. Yeah. So it still had that same yeah. ring of. Brigadier Jerry. Jerry. Mm -hmm. And then she changed the name from Sister Nancy to Mumma Nancy. Okay. She used to get so big and stout, so she from Sister to Mumma Nancy. Okay. Yeah, you know, so yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. surprising, small world. Yeah. Yeah. See that little short man like you. Like, <laughs> I said, no, no, short man. I mentioned it too. Yeah. But, uh, I was the last time. I just said it. Uh, because the short man is in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> this is not only, not only short man, but my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was, my Orlando was representing all that, um, Barbados. Oh, yes. And you're representing Jamaica, no? Orlando, I hope you're listening. We have a short man from Jamaica here. <laughs> Okay. All right. So we yes. have a lot of our short man jokes yes. now. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, a little humour goes a long way. So, um, so Lloyd, can you tell us a bit about um, your first record label? My first record label was, it was, it was two labels running at the same time because, it, you know, it, it, it's weird because um, I had LGR, which is sort of. The label with um where I released Swing and Dine <laughs> that came out January the same time I January eighty three mm -hmm. the same time I released that January eighty three was the same time I was recording live at Dick Shepherd School mm -hmm. album and so I I formed a label called Raiders that's right mm -hmm. Raiders label and um and that took care of the dancehall side of things you know meanwhile LGR took care of the the, the, the lover's side, yeah, okay. you know, so from that, we, my first record was Swing and Dine, that got to number four in the, the reggae charts, and then um, then on the back of that now, the Dick Shepherd School album came out, went to number two. Wow. Yeah, and I remember That's my so dear friend, um, God bless his soul, Robert Allen, when, when he was working in Dublin, he said, you're lucky, you know, because most men, <laughs> they, they, they take about say three, two, three, four records to release before they they get a hit, mm -hmm. and you just get you just got a hit straight away, boom, mm -hmm. both album and twelve inch. Wow. Yeah. So you know from there, I just went on from from strength there because when I did David Miller's song, um, my second single was Paul Taj's first single, which was no one don't know that song. It it wasn't really a hit. It was a version to Swing and Die called Move Up Close to Me Baby. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's not actually on the album. No, that's not on the album. Yeah. You know, and and, and it's weird because that copy got burned in the fire, uh, in in in, in um, January just gone. Is it? New Year's Eve. Yeah. There was a big. We stored everything in in, in a storage. Um, okay. Sugar on storage. I burned down. Almost mm -hmm. the studio. All the studio tapes have gone. Mm -hmm. I've got copies of one or two, but. Yeah. So there's no way you can get back any copy of that at all? Um, yeah, I suppose you can get them from um, certain specialists you can get them from. I think but, you should. Um, move up close to me, baby. <laughs> uh, that one, is, I, I think that's one of the only, only tunes that I haven't got a copy of. Paul at Time's first single. And I think, you know, and I was thinking about it a few months ago saying I should redo it because I think it would it, 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 it suit now. Yeah. You know, because at the time it wasn't ready. You Just know. like some of your songs that mm -hmm. I believe that there's a few tracks on there which we're going to hear um, shortly that can be released mm. to now. They yeah. still have a current yeah. feel to it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, well, you see, that, that album there, Saloy's Greatest Hits, it, it's a forever album. It's equivalent, not, not on the same standard as um, Bob Marley's Legend, but it's equivalent to that. But where Bob Marley, that Island Record, can, um, Put all these great tracks yeah. on one album. Yeah. You understand? And call it Legend. Mm -hmm. My one mm -hmm. is called Solo Life Greatest Hits. Greatest. And that's all yeah. the tracks yeah. that I've done with um, artists that I I saw myself as a platform yes. to open up for 
new UK artists, mm. you know, or like Tipper Irie, mm. you know, um, Paula Taja, Horseman, awesome, Lorna G, <laughs> you know, Ricky Rankin, and, and, and also um, Sandra Cross. Because when Sandra Cross, when we and Peter Honeygale, um, he also him, I think it's his first tune as well, mm. Peter Honeygale. It's all on the album. Yes. Because I remember me and Peter Honeygill and Raymond Simpson used to go and pick up um, Sandra Cross from Brixton and pick her up to go to the studio and go to West End. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but West End, you know, then when I said, I said, West End. <laughs> of all the studios, they, got, they took me on Wardour Street. The expensive Ooh, studio. I'm at the side. Oh, and when, Pe when Peter, when Peter and, 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 and um, Raymond's there doing their backing vocals and they're not getting it right, so I have to do a retake, retake. I'm there looking at the clock table. Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm getting charged. I'm getting charged. I'm wearing the West End. So, was that one of the longest recordings that you did? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, was that one of the longest recordings? No. That, 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 session, session. that session was long. And then another session with, um, oh my gosh, the, the horn section. Tantan, -tan, these are Jamaican guys, Tantan -tan and Bami. Okay, I, yeah, Tantan. -tan. Yeah, with the uh, Easy Street studio, we're there and we're blowing Derek Lenoy's um, track and Aswad was the back end. Good band that Aswad. Aswad, yeah. yeah, Aswad, yeah, Aswad, yeah. Aswad, yeah. They, they, they're the one who back um, My Valentine oh, okay. and, and the opposite for Tipper Hiring. Mm -hmm. they, they did that track for me and they did Derek Lenoy's one. And we did it, you know, and we did it, and I blew it on, and, and then two of them were arguing with each other. Listen, can't argue with you. Time is money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they, they take it. But the longest track ever to record, that to, to record, uh, was Paul Etajo, Cause You Love Me Baby. It took me 28 hours. Oh, my yes. song, man. 28 hours to make a four minute song. Wow. wow. You know, and, and wow. It, it, it was like, wow, because, you know, we had to use three different studios. Oh. It was trying to get the time, and we, we got there, Flame Studio in, 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 in uh, Manor, Manor House. And that's the thing, you know, we had to drive all the way from Brixton to all the way up to Manor House, which is Finsbury Park inside there. Oh <laughs> my god. Get up there, lay the track, oh. come back, Paul had to do the vocals. She couldn't do the harmony, so I had to go back and get Alex Charles to do the backing vocals. Then go Easy Street to get Adam to do the guitar. Wow. Then go Easy, no, then go Mark Angelo Studio, yeah, and then do the horn section. Wow. Oh, so you're going backwards and forwards, oh, right. up and down. <laughs> and but then when you think about it, it was live instruments those days. Yes. I mean that's yeah, yeah. that's what I think we miss yes. to a good well, extent these Paul days. Well, Paul at one wasn't live. That was the first. That was the first. Um, it was that the eighty-four was a transition from transition what I find in the UK, mm. um, where we were switching from um, live to digital. drum machine. Yeah, digital, our yeah. machines. Yeah, because yeah, the bullet charger one. I'll tell you something. That the studio, the the, the computer froze. Oh my! Oh, <laughs> <that is it. laughs> it does it froze and okay. Live music. Get on here. <laughs> but luck, but, but great about what was great about that is that when it came back. There's a part in Paul Charger's song where it says, it does co -co -co, co -co -co. And I looked at Anthony and I went, oh, where did that come from? And, and then we looked at each other and said, you know what, it's all right, we'll leave it in. <laughs> 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 leave it in. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it, it's, yeah. Uh, that's some good, uh, uh, some good experience. Mm -hmm. um, and wonderful time with, with, uh, with different artists, mm -hmm. so many different artists, you know, um, great artists. Don Ricardo, Honey, It's You. That was the quickest one. That took six hours. Yeah. And it, the amazing thing is that I was just looking at the the album, and you know sometimes you see albums they've only got like twelve or so songs on. Mm. This one, how many do you have on? Is it twenty two? Twenty two tracks. It's amazing. Yeah. Great value. And even even um, when we did Gilroy Sydney Youth Change, um, mm. we, uh, it, that was recorded in um, Gil, um, Preacher's House mm. in Fort Neve. Mm. And I said, you know what, I'll leave you like you get on with it. Miller's left them and I just go about my business and come back next year. So they stayed the whole day, the whole night. And did that? Yeah. Wow, dedication. Yeah. <laughs> but I said the whole day, like, the whole night. I come back and they gave me this and I, when they gave me the track, I went, hmm, that's all right, but it, it's missing something. Mm. You know, it's not clear enough. So but that's, that's the thing about the producer, that's what makes you 
So yeah, it it's, stand it's, out. It's, the producer knows. Yeah, when you've got good ears. Yeah. You know, I, I you know, I, I, most of the time I know I kind of feel what I want, mm -hmm. but then you have to try and get the right musicians, <laughs> and then you have to have the right studio, mm -hmm. right engineer. The engineer is so important. Yeah. All these factors makes make it important. You know, so people make making a song. Anyone can make a song, but to make a song, you know, the right way, sometimes it, 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 it takes some, you know, geniuses. I mean, like when I heard like. Um, when when the Beatles did um, oh blati oh blata like oh, oza, yeah, oh. Blah, blah. yeah so yeah. they went Jamaica record that yes and then um, Paul Simon said he wanted to make a reggae record mm. and he said I want to go to the same studio where the Beatles went and and three years later he went down and, and in 1970 that was 68 Beatles one was and 71 was Paul Simon's mother and child. Mm. Now, I love that track. He did that in '71. Do you remember that tune? The mother and child. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so the so the song. So the yeah. point I'm trying to make is that you know studios. Um, he he didn't want to go to no other studio, but the same studio where mm -hmm. where the Beatles went. And I'm like that. Where, 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 where you know you want to go to certain studios, like the the, the current one I've got at the moment. What's going to come out now with JJ? We'll, we'll talk about that later. Don't yeah. give them too much just yet. You, but listen, I'm gonna we're gonna take a break now guys um here live at the heritage studio we have our very special guest this evening an award-winning legendary sir lloyd dj um entertainer events organizer producer wow we're having conversations with him and we're going to come back after the break and open up the lines for you as well so you can have ask him some questions about his musical journey and, and his entertainment. We're commemorating this wonderful man here who has given his dedication to music his whole life mm -hmm. for 40 years. That is a must, massive milestone achievement. It's what, is it a ruby anniversary? That's right, yeah, a yeah. ruby anniversary. Ruby yeah? edition. So listen guys, we're right here on Heritage TV. Let's talk about it with Tracy alongside my co-host Marcia and my special co-host tonight, Sandiva. All right, the telephone number is 020-800-46100. That's 020-800-46100. When we come back after the break, we'll open up the lines. So stay tuned, go and grab yourself a quick cup of tea or a sandwich and we'll be right back after the break. See you then. Love and hate. Can never be fake. Take it! Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival Winker with coach loads of ravers coming from Oxford and Wolverhampton. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge, Rushy Green Cat for SE6 4BD from 10 till late, Smart Dress Essential. Entertainment from Idol Rockers, Mr. Styley, Lovers T, DJ Ken from Wolverhampton, Sir Sambo from Oxford and Sir Lloyd. Tickets £12 from the DJs, Fresher Bakery, Norwood High Street, CNJ Flooring, Lavender Hill. Online from Eventbrite and Blacknet. Or pay more on the door. Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up Saturday 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge Info call 07956 076 884 Love and hate can never be fake. Take it! Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival Winker with coach loads of ravers coming from Oxford and Wolverhampton. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge, Rushy Green Cat for SE6 4BD from 10 till late, Smart Dress Essential. Entertainment from Idol Rockers, Mr. Styley, Lovers T, DJ Ken from Wolverhampton, Sir Sambo from Oxford and Sir Lloyd. Tickets £12 from the DJs, Fresher Bakery, Norwood High Street, CNJ Flooring, Lavender Hill. Online from Eventbrite and Blacknet. Or pay more on the door. Big Joe and Sting UK present Present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge. Info call 07956 076 884. Love and hate can never be fake. Take it! Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up with coach loads of ravers coming from Oxford and Wolverhampton. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge, Rushy Green Cat for SE6 4BD from 10 till late, Smart Dress Essential. Entertainment from Idol Rockers, Mr. Styley, Lovers T, DJ Ken from Wolverhampton, Sir Sambo from Oxford and Sir Lloyd. Tickets £12 from the DJs, Fresher Bakery, Norwood High Street, CNJ Flooring, Lavender Hill. Online from Eventbrite and Blacknet. Or pay more on the door. Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival
the link up. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge. Info call 07956-076-884. Love and hate can never be fake. Take it! Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up with coach loads of ravers coming from Oxford and Wolverhampton. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge, Rushy Green, Catford, SE6, 4BD from 10 till late, Smart Dress Essential. Entertainment from Idol Rockers, Mr. Styley, Lovers T, DJ Ken from Wolverhampton, Sir Sambo from Oxford and Sir Lloyd. Tickets £12 from the DJs, Fresher Bakery, Norwood High Street, CNJ Flooring, Lavender Hill. Online from Event Bright and Blacknet. Or pay more on the door. Big Joe and Sting UK present. Present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge. Info call 07956 076 884. Love and hate can never be fake. Take it! Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up. With coach loads of ravers coming from Oxford and Wolverhampton. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge. Rushy Green, Catford, SE6, 4BD from 10 till late. Smart Dress Essential. Entertainment from Idol Rockers, Mr. Styley, Lovers T, DJ Ken from Wolverhampton, Sir Sambo from Oxford and Sir Lloyd. Tickets £12 from the DJs. Fresher Bakery, Norwood High Street, CNJ Flooring, Lavender Hill. Online from Eventbrite and Blacknet. Or pay more on the door. Big Joe and Sting UK present Present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge. Info call 07956 076 884. tuned in this is let's talk about it with tracy uh, here at the heritage studios in london and joining me in the hot seat tonight we have our very special guest award-winning sir lloyd as you can see him here sir lloyd thank you for having me <laughs> and we are most grateful for having you here tonight well, likewise i feel privileged as well thank you and as i said i've got my special host tonight sandiva Hi. And also our other special hosts that you're all used to are <laughs> Marcia. Marcia. <laughs> all right. So this part of the show, we're going to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> so this part of the show, we're going to listen to some music um, that Sir Lloyd has produced, and mm -hmm. the telephone lines is now open. And I repeat again, it's 020 800 46100. That's 020 800 46100. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask Sir Lloyd, and to also congratulate him for his musical journey, 40 years in the industry, that is a massive achievement. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It goes without saying that we really need to give you a massive round of applause. You know, 
there's a lot of DJs and producers who have been in the industry um, as long as you and are not here mm. to celebrate it. Mm. And some have, have passed. And there's also um, those that are still here have not been celebrated. And then we sort of give them that accolade when they've gone. Mm. So I'm, I'm truly honoured and, you know, this is really coming from my heart that we want to stand tall with you and bow with you at the same time to say, you know, well done, continue doing what you're doing, mm. you, you know, and, and keeping up British reggae music alive. Mm. And there's not only reggae music his man has actually produced, you know. No. <laughs> So R&B, R&B. We've that, got a couple of R&B tracks, yeah. yeah you yeah. know, not only that. So, you know, we heard Marcy's favourite song, one of mine, and I suppose yours as well, Rock With Me Baby. So we're just going to listen to another song. Um, so, Mr DJ, we can just get like a minute of the next track. And Lloyd could tell us a little bit what that song is about. We just talk through it for us. Can you get the next track ready for me, please? Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Take it down a bit then. Take it down. <laughs> DJ's well into the music, you know. <laughs> so the song we were just listening to is um, Swing and Dine. Yeah. How that came about was um, we used to play in a place called Providence in, in Battersea, Clam Junction. And um, there's a track called Let Me Go by Norman Star Collins and that was a big track and um, when it comes to the, the instrumental part now David used to pick up the mic and sing Swing and Dine so I said well oh, I never know so David can sing so I said yeah I think I think we should take that we should record that and take it to the public and that's what we did two years later you know yeah. So that just became the back end of Let Me Let Me Go. I yeah, love that back, song as well. Yeah, the two of them was just brilliant. Yeah, and it's amazing how that, that bass line came about because that bass line came on the back of um, uh, 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 an old um, Lloydie Campbell track called um, uh, In Addis Time. Oh, Robbie Doe. Robbie <laughs> yeah, yeah, 1976, that track, yes. yeah, come on. Yeah, that's how Preacher, Preacher did the bass line for that. And um, that's where he got it from. Yeah, yeah so, um, and Swing and Dine went on to be, it, like I said earlier on, it, it got to number four in the reggae charts. My first, my first single, Begin of 83. Wonderful. Well done, well done, well done. And let's quickly listen to a little bit of the next track, please. Select up, DJ. <laughs> So we just heard, we just heard My Valentine. That's a song that I know that you release quite regular around about Valentine's. Yep. Well. Yeah, well. Um, of lately I've been releasing it every, every um, Valentine. 
was your buddy's band at that time. Good <laughs> 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 Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. <laughs> I got manic. No, but um, yeah, Valentine. I, 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 over the last five years, I've been, I've been re-releasing it. Okay. You know, every time Valentine come, I just have it ready in January. Boom, it goes. Okay. You know, um, for people to 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 purchase it, and it's good for the album as well. Okay. You yeah. know, it, it's a, it's a it's a long longevity song. Yeah, it's a, it's a song that will live on forever. Cause it's Valentine, mm-hmm. just like you have Christmas. Yes. <laughs> every every December or well, November, then start the Christmas song. Then. Isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. That song yeah. does actually stick into your head when it comes <laughs> round to Valentine's, <laughs> because you gotta listen out for Sir Lloyd's Valentine track. And funny enough, we I've redone it again. Um, I've, I actually went into the studio, did fifteen tracks. Is it? Yeah, fifteen tracks with Matthew and Foxy and. Um, Jason is one of the first ones that's that's coming out of that, out of those fifteen tracks. I recorded it two years ago, you know. Ooh, yeah. Excellent, excellent. All right, let's just quickly move on to the next song, please, DJ. Selector. Now you come, my Remember, guys, this is live. <laughs> Men does a tell you about the opposite The opposite, if what I read us a talk it A talk it, eh Because the opposite if you milk shade that a nest quick The opposite if you bag, say that a basket The opposite if you put rust and know that a ship The opposite if you cry and say that a fell tip The opposite if you dub plate that a plastic The opposite if you petticoat that a slip The opposite if you anodin that a lem sip You drink that down and reach your belly well quicker A little lap of that you got it's the opposite, the opposite. If I read us a talking, a talking, men just a tell you about the opposite, the opposite. <laughs> so we had a bit of dancing again. Drink there, what a drink there, what a drink there. <laughs> You know, we, we had our little bit of our drinks outside, so when we go outside, we'll drink a bit more. We had some, uh, what is it, Marcia? Prasiku. <laughs> not today, actually. We had some caviar. Oh, caviar. We had, not caviar. Caviar. Oh, caviar. <laughs> caviar fish. <laughs> caviar fish. <laughs> so, okay. so we just heard the, the song called The Opposite, which is a follow-up to My Valentine, mm. which was um, done by Tipper Iris. Tipper that was his Iris. first single, Tipper Iris' first single. And, um, you know, I, 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 when we did Valentine, when I recorded Valentine, um, Tipper used to have this track that used to chat, chat live in the dance, The Opposite, and the similar. And I said, okay, let's see if that will fit that. And we tried it, and, it, and the rest is history. And it did well. Mm. First single that opened the door for him. And from there, Pete Honeygirl, I mean, Tipper Irie went on to do, he's one of the longest standing um, entertainers in this country uh, that travels all over the world. Mm-hmm. You know? Very good, very good live. <coughs> I saw him live the other day. Yeah. He's just come back from Spain as well. Yeah, yeah. he has, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he works extremely hard as well. Oh, yeah. he's very good, man. He's there. And he's actually recreating himself and rebranding mm. himself. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's yeah. rebranded himself as well, so he's very mm. current as yeah, well. That's good. So yeah. that's good. So you've opened many doors. There you go. You've opened many, many yeah. doors, yeah. trust yeah. me. Artists. And you're, mm. you're still opening doors. Well, yeah, well, so we've got this new one, the young uh, youngster coming up called JJ Born to Sing. And I've done a track with him, you know, we recorded it, sent it to him. And he, he's a few, about a few weeks later, he sent me the track by WhatsApp. And I was like, wow. He just wrote new lyrics to it. And I said, right, Jason, we're going to release it. Although it, it, it's, it's taken a bit of time to release, because we recorded it last year, but we 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 done one mix. We done a couple of mixes which we're not happy with. We done one in the um, Stingray Studio. It it didn't come off. Then we did a, another mix in Brixton Hill Studio. <coughs> it still didn't come off. It's not until we took it to Croydon, to um, Progressive Studio, 
that one was the best one out for, for the UK. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Jamaica and then and mixed it at Star Trail Studio with Fata. And I said, yes, that one there. <laughs> and it's called Strange. Strange, yeah, it's yeah. Strange. yeah. And we're gonna he- we're gonna hear that just soon. So we're gonna quickly quickly run through. I want to um, play a couple of other songs, some of your hit songs before we run out of time, and we've got to play that one. We definitely. Um, can we hear the next one, uh, please, DJ? I'm not gonna say what it is just in case we haven't lined up the right one. <laughs> Because Barrington Levy, well, at the time, um, the investigators was Woman I Need Your Loving, and Trevor Waters had a national chart hit with um, Stuck On You. And the two of them were just one week, one week was Stuck On You, one week was Investigators, and it went on like that for about four weeks. Wow. And I said, right, they run out them time, no. I put me time, <laughs> we come in, no, go, we just, we well, come in. And the tune just stayed there at number three. Then Barrington Levy came in, boom! With Under Miss Sensi. Mm. Oh, that yeah. track. <laughs> and that track at and that time. And it just stopped you. That it just yeah. stopped. Just stuck Getting the number one. So at the same time, Shine had a tune with, um, that he redid over for, um, he redid <coughs> a version of um, Billie Jean. Mm. Billie Jean. Not That's that. nice. Yeah, the that Michael Jackson yeah. He did. He did oh. Yeah, but Shine did it in a reggae version. Mm-hmm. And that was number two, you oh. know. So Paul Etage had to just set for um, number three. Yeah. So it wasn't until the following year now we get the number one. You know, with Horseman. You know. Yeah. And that the one that's next on the list, is it? And it is. Can we have Horseman? Let's move. <laughs> that's it's the next yeah, on the list. Couple.
Okay, so we just heard um, two tracks back to back, Horse Move and Funky Sensation. So just tell us quickly a bit about the Horse Move. Well, Horseman was a, was another DJ again. He, he used to come to the to the session to the dancers, and he used to chat horse move. And I said, "Oh, so we can do something with that, there, you know." And, um, and then I found out that he can play drums. Mm -hmm. He's a real he's a real good drummer, and he and he, and he do drumming now, mm -hmm. you know. And um, he he played the drumming on the, on that same horse move, and that was produced written it was written by me. Um, Patrick Augustus, who wrote Baby Father, mm -hmm. and Horseman in my mum's kitchen. One <laughs> Sunday evening, we wrote it in one, in one evening, Sunday evening, yeah. And it was based on the format at the, t at the time. Um, there was a, um, a horse, the Grand National. Okay. That comes, yeah, so it was around that theme of the Grand National. Yeah, so, um, it, yeah, it was, a, it was a song that it took about two studios to go and record that, stop, that song. So did it have a, a, a dance to it, a horse move? Yeah, there dance? was a dance, had, there was, was a dance, because if you look at the cover, he, he was doing the jockey style. Then oh, time right. they <laughs> then time they couldn't afford, we couldn't afford video like now, because video was like for, for, for the selected few, like, you know, the pop boys then, like, you know, Paul McCartney and then guys, they, mm -hmm. the only big companies can afford um, the videos, and then, uh, then time, because it, it was very expensive. But it would be nice because it would be nice to show the choreography of the dance for Horseman at that time in '85. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Mm. So what about this funky sensation? That was a big. Yeah, that was in the same year because that year was just a great year for me, '85. Because that, on the back of that, I did Funky Sensation, and that just blew up, and it, it would have got number one in the soul charts, but. Um, um, Alexandra O'Neill and Sherelle were number one with um, Saturday Love. Saturday Love. Yeah. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, and that was a massive. That was, that was number one in the pop charts. Yes. For how much was. weeks? Yeah, that was. And, you know, so um, but we got we done. I, I, we sold over forty thousand of that song. You know, so I was I was really pleased with that. That was very good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. You know, it's it's a shame that that those kind of figures are not happening much nowadays no. for no. artists. Mm -mm. 40,000, bloody hell. You know, like, yeah. today, now, gosh, mm. that would be something. It would yeah. bring change, isn't it? That would definitely be something. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. now it's all about streaming now. Streaming, downloading, yeah, and streaming. little or nothing in pence. Yeah, like exactly. Even, yeah. Yeah, so let's quickly move on to the next one, You Changed. Yeah, that was the next number one. Um, Gilroy suddenly brought that to me. And you know, the funny thing about when I recorded You've Changed, like I said I, I earlier on, I left them in the studio. They done it all day, all night, and um, you, I, it's funny because a, a girl called Jackie called up and said, "Daddy, only played a tune of yours, and, and I like it." So when Jackie calls you, you know that that's going to be a hit. Oh wow! Because the reason why I said that two other records that she called about was one of them was um, Half Pint. Um, Substitute lower. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. When she said, Lloyd, that tune there, I said, What? Well, right. And then that's Lloyd that's Brown, Brown had a hit with um, Sharon and I together. And she called up and said, Lloyd, that tune there. And they were all time, and this, this is before it kind of like blow up. Yeah, yeah. So it's like she had that kind of um, vision of what was a hit. So when she called me and said that Friday evening, I said, Yeah, Daddy only played your tune. Uh, you got a tune there, but I go, Oh, Daddy only played it. Okay. You know, I said that was going to be a hit. Because so I was getting calls from different people. That's when you know when you're going to have a hit. You know? Uh, and then you see people buying the tunes. Yeah, that was my last, that was my last number one. Yeah. Excellent. So can we hear a bit of You Change, please, DJ?
Oh, isn't it really interesting? Mm -hmm. So we just heard you changed, and uh, Lloyd's already given an account of that was your... Last number one. His last number one. Yeah. It was a really big tune, a, a, a <coughs> wonderful tune. I remember it was also, you can get hold of the song on Reggae Hits, Reggae Hits yeah. Volume yeah, 10, mm. something like that. Yeah, you can get hold of it. It was a Sunday song for me, actually. Yeah. <laughs> One of the Sunday songs, you know, you, you put it on in the background and um, you'd be cooking and, and stuff like that. It mm. was one of those songs that you rock in. Uh, yeah, I liked it. From the moment mm. I first heard this song, I thought, oh my goodness, I really like it. It was different. Mm. I, I can't remember at that time what was the music at that time, but for some reason that particular song came out and it stood out. Mm. Mm. It just stood out for me. Mm. Um, all the others kind of like took a, a, a back seat. It just seemed like, ooh, this is kind of fresh. I think it was what it was needed at the time. Mm. It was just like a fresh song. Well, a lot of the music was dominated by um, dancehall tunes at the time because at that time you had Barrington Levy and um, Cut Your Ranks with a track called um, Dan Sara. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. And everybody up to work. That's right. So there wasn't any lovers at that and time. And that's why I think that's when dance. And Shabba Ranks yeah. and Home Tea and Cover Tea was number one with Your body's here with me yeah. and your mind is on right. the other right. side. And that was number one for weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks. And we did it for two for weeks and weeks and weeks and then one week we just get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, get in there. Yeah. Well, I don't know if everyone's shy or what, but you guys definitely yeah. seem to be shy. Um, you know, we're going to be wrapping up very soon. So if you want to have a quick chat and ask uh, Sir Lloyd anything on 020 800 The lines are open, guys, so you can give us a call. And it's on the studio screen as well. It's on the screen. You can see 020 800 46100. This is the legendary Sir Lloyd celebrating 40 years in the mm. industry. We've got that coming up soon. And you've got that as well? Yeah, coming up. Yeah, the way we're celebrating it. It's good. It was going to be supposed to be this Saturday, but um, due to the venue, the Tavernetta hasn't got... Um, uh, they run out of late licenses. Yeah. So we had, we had to move it to Alchemy Bar. I was going to move it for the 9th of um, November, but wanted to give more time, so we moved it to the 28th of... Um, save the best to last. 28th of December. At Alchemy Bar. So you're going to be celebrating your 40th anniversary right at the end of the year, 28th of December. Okay, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. brilliant. That's a Saturday. The last Saturday, the last Saturday okay, okay. of the year, and so we said we save the best to last. The last. Yeah. So we're um, inviting all the DJs and sound system and artists that I've worked with over the years, oh, over the last 40 years, yeah. to come down and celebrate. Star-studded night, that's going to be. Mm. Isn't it? Absolutely star-studded. Yeah. You make sure you're there. Well, <laughs> Absolutely. <stay> by. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sir Lloyd, you have with you some interesting goodies uh, that you'd like to share with our audience. They've got a big placard in front, which is an award. Oh, yeah. That's Would you like to... This is one of the awards that we, 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 uh, that we won. This is one of the many. Paul at Taja, because you love your baby. Best news, um, newcomer of the year 1984. And that was at um, the Kensington Hotel. You know, it's a shame I haven't got the one for the for the for when we won the best sound system in 1981, mm. 82, and um, that was at the Cafe Royal. First time reggae ever going on Cafe Royal on Regent Street. Yeah, that is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is brilliant. And brilliant. Um, and then this album is what is the sum is is the equivalent to the Bob Marley legend. Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is the, this is the forever album with all those hits that we played tonight. And there's more on there, because as you said, there was 22 tracks on there. Yes. Yeah, so it's value for money. Definitely. You know, available on iTunes and um, Amazon. Okay. Brilliant. Wow. So there you have it. You've got, you can get his Soloid Greatest Hits mm. available on iTunes and Amazon. Amazon. And also you can contact the big man himself if you know how to get hold of him. You can get him via Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, Insta and also tweet. your tweets. Yep. Oh, he's, he's, he's on Twitter. <laughs> you can tweet him if you want to as well, you know. You can definitely tweet him. So, 
you know we're going to be wrapping up soon but we're not going to finish yet because obviously we have one more special song that we'd like to to play which is will soon be released for some of you who've never heard of the song tonight might be your first time that you've ever experienced this because wow you've heard it right here on the let's talk about it show and for some of you might have heard it a bit up there in the dance hall section but it will be released sometime next year yeah, yeah? have we got that lined up <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, said, Did you have it up? I don't know. Did you tell him? It's strange. I don't, know if you, I, I don't know if you told him that one. I don't know if he knows that one. <laughs> this is big. This, have we got? Um, can we actually find the song called Strange? That's uh, his last song, which will be. Oh, hold on. Somebody's calling. Let me see if I can put you on that speaker. Is it that yeah. one? Speak again, please. That's mute. Oh, oh I've muted you. What have I done? Oh, just don't hang up, my darling. I'm trying to find a loudspeaker. There it is. Oh. That's, That's not a loudspeaker. What have you done? Hello? You've got rid of her. <laughs> um, I think you've got rid of her. I've got rid of her. We've got rid of her. Oh, she's on hold. No, I've lost her. Oh my goodness. Thomas. Right, are you there? All right, my dear. Can you introduce yourself again, please? And Sir Lloyd's here to take your question. <laughs> Hi, I'm. My name is Just Linda. Good and I would love to know. Hi, I'd love to know what is your plan in the next for next year? Because we've followed you for years, and we've enjoyed every song that you've ever created. Oh, bless you! Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. That's very nice. Nice to hear that. Well, what I've got planned for next year is is, is to relaunch my. I, I, I took a back seat from the label. I came out. I stopped um, back in two thousand and one. I, I didn't bother release nothing anymore. And this is going to be actually my first release this century. And um, although it took some time to record it, I, I took time with it because I wanted to make sure it, I can get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we actually done four mixes on this particular track called Strange. And we started to work, I've got uh, work with um, Patrick Johnson. Uh, we're working mm -hmm. on um, a Soloid record label uh, with the, the band called Ladies Choice. Um, with oh, Patrick lovely. Johnson. Patrick Johnson is, is one of the lead vocalists from a group called um, Private Collection. Do you remember that group? Probably. Yeah, they said they sang this tune, that hit tune, uh, Slow Down. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I'm, and I'm actually scouting around looking for, um, for talents anyway. That's nice. So if you know anybody who, 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 who's got talent, bring them my way, because I always see myself as a platform. <laughs> to expose new talent. Are you a singer, just Linda? She's giggling away. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the Are you an I artist? <laughs> you know I am, but I've already signed up. <laughs> okay. So that means that um, you could be a potential then, yeah? Who knows? No, I'm, I'm already signed up, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. JJ Born to Sing, he's singing my first single for this century that I recorded. He, oh. Yeah, so it's a track called Strange. And the lyrics in that that mm -hmm. he put in there is very, very um it's it's very very true to him. And when you listen to that song there, Jason wrote from the heart and a lot of people can relate to it because the song's talking about you're there for someone all the time and then mm. the time you're down 
and you turn to that person for help and they're not there to help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sad. that's true. Mm. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you for calling. Thank you for yeah, calling. Thank you. Thank you. Say hi to Sandra for me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for calling. I'm going to watching now. Oh, thank well, you so much. <laughs> thank you. Take care, my darling. Bye-bye. 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 Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Okay, guys, that's uh, one of our calls. If you want to call in real quick, 020 800 46 100. just heard um, the soon to be released song Sir Lloyd's latest track Strange mm. you heard it first here on let's mm. talk about it you might have heard it around some of the dance scenes but you've never heard it live on television so there you go. be ready for and it's it. not released until next year so not much people have got it it's only a few handful of the DJs have got it so who are the people behind that song well <laughs> Ooh, ooh, Matthew and Fluxy um, actually um, done the, the backing track, and uh, and this, uh, Sarah did the horns, and Jason did all the vocals, you know, a three piece horn, a three piece harmony. Wow. You know, Jason's very talented, you know, with his songwriting, as well as. I don't know if you've ever seen Jason's live, he is really talented, very good. You know, that guy, that is my little nephew, well, my cousin, he's my first cousin. And um, I'm watching him grow, <laughs> you know. And um, he's doing things at the moment. He's doing things. He's up and coming, and he's doing things. And I hope this track, when it comes out next year, <coughs> will help take him on another level. And that is what I'm working on. Um, just before we um, sort of finish, I really would like to know because I know your parents are Jamaican. Mm -hmm. Do you do you still you know love that sort of Jamaican food? Or like, I know you live in England. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, what yeah. Your favorite? <laughs> what, what was your favorite? Uh, uh, I love planting and, you know, okra. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, what about that? Sweet potato. Aki and salt and, fish. Aki and salt oh, fish. Okay. And, and I'm not really a meat eater. I do eat meat, but not that not that much. Mm -hmm. You know, now and again, I, I like the oxtails. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love the oxtail. Oxtail oh, with butter beans. Definitely still got the Jamaican, oh, yeah. Yeah, Jamaican yeah. feel to all yeah, the yeah. flavours. Rice and peas, yeah. chicken. You know, jerk chicken, you know it go. You know it go, yeah man. <laughs> well we all we all like our we like our food, you know? We all like our food. So um anything else? Andrew? The only thing I wanted to ask you was like, what was your influences when you were growing up and influences the music? Um there was you know, basically listening to you hear you hear about um sounds like Cox and and King Tubby's um, 
I think the main one for me was Safrana B. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that that was uh, you know, when they were when they kicked off in Bali I in seventy seven, that was a sound that was like, wow, you know, very entertaining. I said, Right, I wanna do what they do. But but add my own little flavour to it, do you know what I mean? So when we came when we came in so when we came out fully properly in, in eighty, um, things were changing. You know, the lovers thing started to kick in. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, as well as you had, well, they call it steppers music at that time. You know, you had you had tunes like, "Do you really wanna know about?" Oh, yeah. the, uh, that was like a bridge. Yeah, that was a lovers. steppers. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Was, yeah, it was a steppers tune. Yeah. But on the on but on the lovers side now, you had tunes that there were so many that year with um, uh, "When I Think of You" by Rudy Thomas. Mm-hmm. This is lovers rock, eargasm. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Sugar mine it with good thing going so many and I'm actually mm. uh, I'm actually on a radio station called uh, Venture uh, every Monday four to six Venture nine nine five and so at, FM or what's that yeah FM yeah ninety nine point five four to six and what it is is that I actually um, play the charts of yesteryear and the charts of today but at the moment I'm running a five piece series of um, the year nineteen eighty it's it, it, there's so much good tunes in there. Yeah, it's 120. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you couldn't put it all into one show. No, you couldn't put it in one show. <laughs> so we're doing part, part one, we played 20 to, to 100. Then Monday Garmin played um, 100 to 76. Mm-hmm. Then Monday coming now, I'm playing 75 to 51. Wow. And, and it, just, <laughs> it just gets sweet as we go along. People will love what, that. What's a year? Because that was, that was the only year in the history of reggae music that's had 27 number ones. Wow. wow. That's how strong the music was in that year. 27 number ones. Now, you, if you're trying to get number one, trying to get, say, like, you struggle to get um, 10 great tunes for the year. Mm. Do you know but what I mean? it's coming back, though, reggae. Well, no, reggae's, reggae's always... Yeah, yeah, reggae hasn't gone nowhere. It's, it's always yeah, been there. but we need it to... Yeah, to reggae's always been there, but, mm-hmm. you know, but it, um, I think what's happened um, over the years is that... Um, we we lost a lot of the good um, songwriters. Mm-hmm. Ah, mm-hmm. Do you know, and mm-hmm. then with the music business now copying stuff. Yes. As soon as you put out a tune, because that Jason's tune that's going to come out next year, the moment I sw- release it, what's going to happen? That it's going to get copied. Oh. Do you know what I mean? So then, to com- there's nothing coming back to the writers. You mm. know, because you, you understand. So that's why everything now is done by live shows. That's where yeah. they're making their money now, is by doing live performances. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, people do buy, buy uh, tune online, mm-hmm. but not on the volume as, as, it, as it was, say, like 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. Well, one quick question um, I want you to let the audience know. Um, and let's clear this up. You wasn't anointed by the Queen. I, yes, I was. <laughs> I got did he cut on my ear? Did he see the cut? Did he see the cut? Like, the cut? I just got like that. go with the sword. <laughs> but you went, you went before the queen to get the sword. So yeah. annoyed. Yeah. And the sword <laughs> caught me from the ears. That's all. So, yeah. so let's so let's clear this up and let everybody know. How did you get the name Sir Lloyd? You were not just called Sir Lloyd. You was also given a name by the the people the people's well, choice well, the right honorable sir well what happened is that um how Saloy came about was um what i had quite a few names channel one phase one and because i had an amplifier called trio so i called it trio number one and then and then Saloy. and then my mom's friend alma say we all go with them name there you gotta call it Saloy. you just broke up with them guys there you're on your own. Mm. You've called it after your name. Plus, you want something people can remember. That's right. Because I started to write trio number one mm-hmm. after my amplifier. Mm. It's a trio what? You can't even remember them something. Like <laughs> full, full name. <laughs> and, and so I stuck with Sir Lloyd and look at that. The rest is history. Mm. And it's still here today. And it's not just Sir Lloyd. It's Sir Lloyd the sound. And then you're Sir Lloyd the DJ. Yeah? yeah, and DJ and the mm. publishing company as well. And the company. And, the, and the, the record, record label. label and all that. Uh, which yeah. I'm starting the record label again after taking a break. after mm. Because um, I, was, I was working with some people where um, 
they weren't nice in terms of like running, running off with money, you know, where we had a record deal, a £20,000 record deal, and the man then got signed a record without me. You uh -oh. understand? Oh, yeah. Uh -oh. and, and, and at that point there, you see, you see yourself where, where, where Tina Turner said, when, when, in her part where she just walked with nothing, mm. I just said, you know what, let me just come out of this business. And I just, I just came out the record business and just said, turn my back and just concentrate more on the promotion side, mm -hmm. you know, keeping events. But now I want to come back and put, put, bring the label out. And, and it's a whole new ball game now because most of the record shops are, uh, are closed down. Because back, say, 20, 30 years ago, when you press up a record, you would take these, you'd have, a, you'd have about 500 in your boot, and you'd go and leave 20 at that shop, another 100 at that shop, and you know what I mean? It's not like that anymore now. Mm. Wow. You, you'd have to do it online or at um, at, 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 at the events. Mm. So, wrapping up now, you're going to be touring for your 40th anniversary? Next year, yeah, no, next year. Well, I think, yeah, next year we'll be doing the touring. I mean, last year was, was, was great where we did um, the reggae 50th anniversary at the Clapham Ground, which it should have been the year before because reggae, reggae started in 1967. Do you understand? But because I thought that the, the elders, like someone like Castro Brown, would have done it, mm -hmm. which he didn't pick up on, so I said, all right, then, uh, 2017 is past now, so I might as well just do it for 2018. You know, but for, for, for the Samoa 40th anniversary, uh, a tour, I would love to do a tour uh, next year's summer. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, speaking, I've been speaking to some people already in Birmingham and Manchester and Bristol. To take the to take the album uh, on tour with the new tracks as well. You definitely need to, because you know, forty years is something that needs to be celebrated. I can I mention this? And of course you can. Marty, do you have anything before Lloyd wraps it up? Well, I like to say congratulations and well done to your journey. Hey. <laughs> Thank I'm you. glad to meet you and know that you were such a star. <laughs> Still is. And yeah, well, I know, you know. I know I just, know just a musical ambassador. Talents and, you know, Thank which you. is good. Thank and you. I feel proud. Thank you. You know that, yeah. Thank you. And you know so much of those singers and mm. so much producing for them. And, you know, yeah, mm. that is good. You, you, you bring some of them out. Yeah, yeah. You know, you bring them. So, you know. Really okay. Really glad for you. All right. So, Lloyd, we're going to. Go over to you. Well, next week's Saturday, we're, we're going to be playing at the Love Lounge Reunion, which is at the Club Nouveau in Catford. On the night, you're going to have music coming from Idol Rockers, Mr. Styley, Lover's Tea, and a coach coming from Wolverhampton with DJ Ken, and Oxford with Sir Sambo. That name there, I don't know <laughs> I don't know where I, I, it must be something good, but from when, when I was younger, back in the oh. 60s, and, and that's when I first faced that, that kind of language, yeah. where white folks used to say, Sam, called you Sambo, and nigger. Um. I don't know if I was supposed to say the word, but, but Sambo, I sat, I, so I wonder if it was. I'm wondering if it's if, if, it's, if it ain't a derogatory word. Um, well, maybe it's misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> so well, <boy>. I'm. <laughs> and of I'm, course, I'm Lloyd, sure Sam, so Lloyd, I will be there next week. Next week, um, Saturday, the 26th of October, at the Club Nouveau Love Lounge Reunion. <laughs> you guys got me going. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we are. Say it as it is. Well, yeah, we, we we're real. We keep it real here. Um, we've had a good evening, and I hope you guys enjoyed and has appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> have appreciated having Sir Lloyd in your homes with you this evening as much as we've had him on the couch with us. We've enjoyed learning about some of the history of sound systems and DJs and where he started and mm. to know that he's one of the pioneering people that are sitting right here and he's still going from strength to strength. He's still oh, promoting really. and doing events. He's still DJing as he explained that he's on Venture FM every Monday. He's still putting on dances. 
there's never going to be really a time that you're going to hang your hat up. It doesn't look like it. Uh, <laughs> as, long as, as long as God is willing to make me do what I want to do, I'll do it. Yeah. And then, you know, there's a, there will come a time when your body says, all right, hold on there. Yeah. <laughs> you, forgot, you forgot to sit down, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't feel like that, no. No, because, right. I mean, they had an interview with Cliff Richard on the, on the other day, and Cliff Richard was around about 80, and on, they had him on the BBC TV show, breakfast show, and they said, Cliff, you forgot to sit down, no, you know. And he said, no, I've been <laughs> singing from since the 50s. Mm. That's all I know, and that's what I love, mm. and that's what made me feel good and make me look good as well, mm -hmm. you know? So he just continue. He, he will know when he's ready to stop. Oh, yeah. Do you understand? You will know. Yes, the and when, your body, you. when your body tell you, when you talk to your body and your body say, yeah, sit down, no. Then you sit down. Well, there you have it. Never give up on your hopes and dreams. And if you can do a job like him that you enjoy and you're good at doing and you make people happy, and I'm sure he's created quite a few babies in the household with all his music that he's produced because he was known, because his sound system was known for the um, party sound, the lover's sound. And mm. I don't know if you've ever been to any Sir Lloyd dances, but if you go to any of Sir Lloyd's events, it's full up with women. So that just shows that back in the days, the men used to come to his events because it attracted women. So these men will get together have their dances and create soloid generations, I suppose, <laughs> <laughs> which, which came from his love of music and entertaining people. And as you know, Sir Lloyd, we had a great time having you. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. And we wish you Thank all me. the best and continue to keep going forward and from strength to strength. For those of you that tuned in, this was Let's Talk About It with Tracy alongside my co-host Marcia and our special guest tonight, which was Sandiva. And there's Marcia. Again, over there. Yeah. That, there's Marcy oh, and Sir Lloyd. So we'll tune in again for next week, right here at Let's Talk About It with Tracy. And see you guys. We're over and out. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Love and hate can never be fake. Take it! Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival Winker with coach loads of ravers coming from Oxford and Wolverhampton. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge, Rushy Green Cat for SE6 4BD from 10 till late, Smart Dress Essential. Entertainment from Idol Rockers, Mr. Styley, Lovers T, DJ Ken from Wolverhampton, Sir Sambo from Oxford and Sir Lloyd. Tickets £12 from the DJs, Fresher Bakery, Norwood High Street, CNJ Flooring, Lavender Hill. Online from Eventbrite and Blacknet. Or pay more on the door. Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge. Info call 07956-076-884. Love and hate can never be fake. Take it! Big Joe and Sting UK present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up with coach loads of ravers coming from Oxford and Wolverhampton. Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge. Rushy Green Cat for SE6 4BD from 10 till late. Smart Dress Essential. Entertainment from Idol Rockers, Mr. Styley, Lovers T, DJ Ken from Wolverhampton, Sir Sambo from Oxford and Sir Lloyd. Tickets £12 from the DJs. Fresher Bakery, Norwood High Street, CNJ Flooring, Lavender Hill. Online from Eventbrite and Blacknet. Or pay more on the door. Big Joe and Sting UK present Present the Love Lounge and Revival Link Up Saturday, 26th of October at the Nouveau Lounge. Info call 07956-076-884. All for to present Energetic Friday with multi award winner DJ Mandegap. Every Friday, 9 pm to 3 30 am. Live video mixes, food stuff all night. Come, experience a teaser of fire, fire, fire. 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 fire.